In this video, we'll create a trial Snowflake account and connect Salesforce Einstein to Snowflake, which will allow us then to create a new data set in Einstein Analytics Studio from Snowflake shared data. Before we begin, I want to clarify that the prerequisite to complete this session with me is that you have access to Salesforce Einstein Analytics Studio, and that's all you need. So let's get started. At trial.snowflake.com, you can set up a new Snowflake account if you don't already have one. Once you fill out the first screen with your information, you'll have to make some choices about your Snowflake account. If you want to follow along with what I've done, you can select Enterprise Snowflake Edition and AWS Cloud Provider. You'll then see on the screen that your account is being set up. A few minutes later, you'll receive an email from Snowflake. The login URL in the email is your account information. You'll want to save this and then click the Activate button in the email. During activation, you'll create a username and password. Make sure to save this for later. When you use the link in the email to sign in, you'll want to make note of the account information. Everything in front of the snowflakecomputing.com portion of the URL is your unique account info. Make note of this, you'll need it later. In Snowflake, you'll notice that the warehouse is suspended. It will automatically resume when needed, and we'll see that a bit later. Next, you'll have to decide on a schema that you want to use. If you want to follow along with me, you can use the TPCDS underscore SF100 TCL schema in just a bit. Next, back in Salesforce Einstein Analytics Studio, you'll go to Connect in the Data Manager and add the connection and select Snowflake. Now put it all together. There are some pieces of information specific to you and some noted with the arrows that you have to, to have exactly the same as on the screen unless you make some different choices from Snowflake. The remainder of the fields are more flexible and you can input what you'd like when you're done. Just, and then next, click Save and Test. You'll see a message that the test results are successful. Click the Continue button. Now you've created the Snowflake connection, so at any time you can select the Snowflake connection and continue to the next step. It may take just a minute, but then you'll be shown the screen where you can select an object from the Snowflake data. An important note is that you will only be able to select each object once. When you're done making your selection, click Continue. From there, you select the fields and click Continue. Give it just a minute. And one important thing is that you'll note that the save button is grayed out. That is because there is data that can't be brought in as is. There are warnings for each field for which there is a problem. If you select the column and click the edit button, you'll see the error message, which gives you hints on what you need to fix. So you have some options. You, you can change the precision for the numerical fields. That's one option. You can also change the field type or delete the field altogether. When you fixed all the fields, the Save button is no longer grayed out. So click Save. Once you're done with the fields and have saved your work, you can run your data sync. You can pull Snowflake back up, and now you'll see that the warehouse status is started. You can look further at the history to see the detail in Snowflake. Back in Salesforce, we check the status of our data sync. Once we see it's been successful, we're ready to continue. We'll want to create a recipe, give it a name, create the data set, and select the fields that you'd like to be in your target data set and click Continue. Next, run the recipe. You can check the progress in the monitor. And then there you have it, our new data set. If you'd like to learn more about Snowflake, there is a video playlist for you, which includes resources and topic summaries. I'll include that URL um, in the notes. And as always, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn or Twitter.